YouTube and welcome back. He released the playoff event yesterday. And everybody in the community, okay, almost everybody, is very disappointed. But not me. You know why? Because you cannot be disappointed when your expectations are at the lowest. So today we will look at the new cards, talk about why are these MSPs getting another MSP, and in general talk about where is EA going with the content. As always, if you're new to the channel, please make sure you like and subscribe, and let's jump into the video to look at the content, new cards, and what the hell is EA doing? This will be at least two week event, so we'll see more MSPs and probably more play of cards released. So let's try to stay positive. EA still have a chance to fix it. Will they? That's up to them. The first MSP will be Philip Grubauer from Seattle Krakens. Again, the goalkeepers really don't matter. So yes, if it's your favorite player or player from your favorite team, then go and pick him up. If you pull him on tradable, again, give him a shot. But other than that, I don't think then the goalkeepers really will save your game. But if you look at the synergies, obviously he will boost every single synergy. Superstar ability is quite decent. Default, post to post, butterfly effect, x ray, showstopper, and zone ability light work. The stats are also looking good. Speed is 99, vision is 99, endurance is 95, agility 99, aggression 65, positioning 95, 5 hole 95. So, again, on the paper, this card looks great. Will he help you to win the games? Probably not. The next one will be Kyle Connor from Winnipeg Jets. I'm really excited to see the Winnipeg Jets actually getting an MSP. There are still teams who didn't receive a single MSP. For example, LA Kings. LA Kings don't have a single MSP and I believe there are more teams who didn't receive a single MSP. But again, if you look at the synergies, then you pretty much can boost every single stat with everything you want. I don't really think that at this point in the game, the synergies matter. Superstar abilities, pack on string, elite edges, 1T, unstoppable force and zone ability, make it snappy. Make it snappy will make this card a little bit more fun. I'm still a fan of a silver make it snappy more than a gold. I don't know why, but again, a lot of people like it, so definitely this card is looking good. The only thing I don't like is that EA didn't give him any speed synergy, so basically he's stuck at the 96 speed. Obviously shooting is 99, the hands are pretty much 99, checking is also decent, but that's speed. You probably would expect that Kyle Connor at 96 overall with his size would be a little bit faster. And then we have another monthly Brian Leach card. Again, not maybe monthly, but obviously he already had an MSP, he also have a team builder, so Rangers fans should be happy. I am not happy as a Rangers fan because I would like to see different Ranger players inside of Brian Leach. He's a great player, card is great, but just give us some variety. Defensive synergies also are quite good. You can boost the speed if you want. If you look at the superstar abilities, elite edges, wheels, tape to tape, shutdown and heat seeker. I probably would only activate shutdown and maybe heat seeker. Tape to tape for defensemen, I don't really think it's needed and the wheels and elite edges I possibly could be fun, but elite edges for me is pointless. I don't like the ability. I tried all my team activating with elite edges and I just don't see the difference. If we look at the stats and skating, shooting hands is all really great for a left-handed defenseman. For players who didn't make his previous MSP and if you are a Rangers fan or Brian Leach fan, definitely this card is worth to make it. I probably will go and buy him because he definitely will fit in my all-time Rangers team. And then we have the best card for week one, Yaramin Jagr. This is our endgame Yaramin Jagr because he's just incredible. Sniping forward, playmaking forward, power forward, checking boost, speed boost, agile dangle boost, and accelerator boost. Without any synergies, 96 speed. If you want, you can boost that speed. Elite edges, pack on string, tape to tape, make it snappy, and unstoppable force. Unstoppable force, make it snappy, and tape to tape would be the abilities I probably would activate. Maybe not even unstoppable force, but just tape to tape and make it snappy because he's quite a big guy. Hands and shooting, all 99. The skating stats are great. If there is one card worth picking up, then Yaramin Jagr is definitely the one. I will go and buy him as soon as there will be at least one in the auction house because I'm trying to refresh auction house for the last two hours and so far I didn't see a single one. To upgrade this card from 86 to the 96, you will need 29 power-up collectibles. You will need 15 event collectibles, which I have found it hilarious. 15 for an 86, I get it, but in the same time, for the love of God, because basically just to get 14 collectibles, you need to trade in 188. Or you can trade in 287s and get yourself 16 collectibles to make, let's say, Yarmin Jagr 86 overall. If we trade in 91, we will get 30 Stanley Cup play of items. So you can basically trade in 191 and make 286. I don't know how that works. You also do get a player's pack, but let's be very honest, is that really worth it? In general, I like the cards. I think Yarmin Jagr, Brian Leach, Grubauer, and even Kyle Connor, all of them are great. And I would love to use them in my team. And for people who are just starting the game, I think would give them an opportunity. Again, 
let's be very clear if you're only starting the game you probably will not be able to make any of these msps anyway but if you're just starting the game i don't know you pick it up on ea play and you decided let's spend some money rip them packs and you pull any of these cards 100 they will be really great in your team so i'm not even complaining about the actual cards and attributes but just the player choice because i am the person who always likes the variety give us more cards to use like i said there are a lot of teams who never even received an msp this year so why don't really go and give some of the msps to these teams so other players who are trying to build their favorite team i don't know if i'm like i said la kings fan i could actually build the team i like now if we go back to the standard stanley cup play of 90 overall players every team received a player i will not really go and look to the players on their attributes but let's talk about what the cards actually will do let's say you pull any of these cards they will go up by two in the overall if they win series so for example if oilers win the series against la kings stuart skinner will be a 92 so again i'm assuming we are not receiving more cards so in the second round again if oilers win the series then that card will be a 94 already so the maximum it can go up is to the 98 and if the card will receive a connor smith trophy then it will be a 99 so basically you have to guess which team will win a stanley cup for a chance to get a 90 9 or 98 overall card that probably would release new cards for each team in each round and the cards would go up by one in the overall for every single win for example i don't know toronto and boston bruins go into the game seven there is a chance for players to actually go up by four in the overall it also would link watching real life hockey and i think it would be just more entertaining if you want to see who actually received the card it will be vladimir tarasenko kevin fial max domi philip chronic anthony sorelli sean monahan william carlson seth jarvis charlie coyle casey mittelstad Gustav Nyquist, Stuart Skinner, Eric Gustafsson, Kyle Palmieri, Thomas Hurley, and Charlie Lindgren. If you want to get yourself one of these 16 players, you can actually make it. Go into the set, scroll all the way down. Yes, 70 collectibles. That's so fun. <laughs> And you will not even get a choice pack out of these 16 where you can choose a player from your favorite team, for example. It will be random. I can go with the cost of 70 collectibles, fine, because there is a chance of, let's say, a 99 or 98 overall. But for the love of God, why we cannot choose the player from our favorite team? Why it's a random player out of 16? That doesn't make any sense. And of course, we also have 2023 Las Vegas Knights Stanley Cup run. So we have 16 moments you have to play every single one and if you complete them you will get yourself three collectibles yeah how exciting 16 moments three collectibles if you're just picking up the game and you're just grinding then probably these moments will make a difference in your team if you're playing from day one then there is no point of you playing these moments yeah he also decided to give us a hot headline and objectives so for people who are asking what the heck this is basically just for the new players you have to complete every single objective and you get yourself a hot headliner collectible i think it's just to help the players to start the team this will be very easy you basically just have to play the game again get assist with any hot headliner player items personally i will not go and do this i'm not putting hot headliners into my team but if you're starting the game you make an 82 msp you put it in your team you go and play some squad battles so probably it could help but in the same time you can just go and grind the moments and get free msps we also have three hot rush this week we have stanley cup round one player performers hot rush and pickup hockey trees if we go through the rewards you can get like XP collectibles and so on, which probably I will go and try to do. Then we have Stanley Cup play of collectible. But if we scroll all the way down, you get a power up collectible pack. Usually EA gives us a players in the hot rush to help with the objectives, but this time they decided nah. So in general, another disappointing event. Again, I like the cards, don't take me wrong. I just don't like how it's being presented and how it's being delivered. I probably would use this time of the year to experiment and try something new instead of actually doing something you know will not gonna work. I also understand that how the game is designed and the cards being a currency, there is really not a lot of opportunities for EA content team to deliver deliver a good content because you can only release the same type of content for so long. In the same time, you can still try new things. For example, Captain's event was very great. It was one of my favorite events this year because they was trying to do something different. So there is an opportunity for them to try something different. Do they want to try something different? Probably not because it's just easier to release this kind of content and move to the next one. I cannot wait for NHL 25 already because I just want to see how that will look. If we are getting the same kind of content in NHL 25, then we are absolutely screwed and the player base will just reduce in the first months. I don't want to be like negative every single video when the new content drops, but I just want to enjoy the game. That's all. Let me know down in the comment sections below. What do you think about this week's content? Do you like the cards? And what would you change in the content to make it a little bit more entertaining? I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a good one and see you on the ice.